don't try to tough it out. It's pointless. We trained in an art that goes beyond anything you can imagine. A martial art consisting of six superhuman fighting skills, which at the culmination of training, makes the human body a fiercely dangerous weapon. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today we are going to be examining one of the most prominent and widespread martial arts utilized within the series, the Rokushiki. The Rokushiki is an art form consisting of six techniques with mastery over all six designed to effectively turn an individual into a superhuman. In fact, the literal meaning of Rokushiki is six styles, but despite that, it is entirely possible and much more commonly seen to master and wield less than six of the prescribed techniques, depending on one's own individual needs. Whilst meeting a character who does possess a complete skill set is exceedingly rare. This martial art is primarily used by the world government specifically to train their cipher pole agents. However, it has also been spread to the marine organization and there are even pirates within the world who have been known to have mastered an incomplete set of Rokushiki. So what are these six superhuman skills? Well, let's start by examining what is probably the most fundamental technique in the series, Soru. This ability allows its user to move at extraordinary speeds, as well as use the force generated by said speed to attack opponents with significantly more devastating power. Soru is also one of the few techniques that has its technical implementation revealed, as the principle behind the move is apparently to be able to kick the ground 10 times in the blink of an eye, thus generating an explosive force that propels the user at phenomenal speeds. So it's actually kind of similar to Captain Kuro's Chakushi ability, except that Soru is a much more refined version as its users are actually capable of seeing where they are going when invoking it. And due to the relative ease of activation, Soru is commonly wielded throughout the ground line. For example, our very own protagonist Monkey D. Luffy uses Soru while in gear second to move at his own incredible speeds. But at the same time, it does take a certain standard of trained body to access the move as demonstrated by Nero, who could only perform an incomplete Soru, giving him something of a really swift run rather than the blink of an eye vanishing speed effect that other users have demonstrated. But essentially, the master of Soru gives its user access to super speed. So what's next in the Rokushiki arsenal? Well, moving to the second technique, we have Gepo, literally meaning moonstep, which essentially allows its user to jump on air granting them rudimentary travel through the sky. Like Soru, it is entirely dependent on the user's legs to activate. However, unlike Soru, the mechanism by which Geppo was achieved is currently unknown. However, through wielding its power, a user is able to make much better use of their surroundings and place themselves in an advantageous position to conduct attacks or even make a retreat. However, Geppo presents an even greater utility for general transportation. And once a user has mastered this technique, it becomes very difficult to present them with an obstacle that they are unable to pass. And not only that, but proficient wielders of Geppo can even implement greater variants, such as Sanji, who discovered the Gepo technique out of desperation to escape the hordes of Okama on Momo Iro Island and dubbed it Skywalk. He then went on to develop a variant for use underwater. Although this may be sort of a fusion between Soru and Gepo, Asanji has stated that he kicks the water multiple times to propel himself forward. Of course, a more official combination of Soru and Gepo also exists for those who have truly mastered both forms known as Kami Sori, where instead of simply kicking the air once to propel themselves, they invoke a Soru strategy of kicking it 10 times and begin moving at absolutely maddening speeds through the air. All right though, so now that we can move at ridiculous speeds essentially anywhere we want, we should probably focus on adapting our bodies to deliver some devastating attack power. Which brings us to the third of the Rokushiki techniques, Shigun. Literally meaning finger gun, this close quarters attack sees the user thrust its finger into a target with such speed that it leaves a wound very similar to that of a bullet. And while this can be incredibly damaging on its own, there also exists a lot of Shigun variants, such as Shigun Orin, which is a rapid fire technique hitting the target multiple times, much like machine gun fire, or the Jushi gun, which sees the user attack a target with all 10 of their fingers at once, rather than just one. Furthermore, it should also be noted that the Shigun is not restricted to use in fingers and it can be utilized by any sort of protruding body part. As demonstrated by Kaku when he used his giant square giraffe snoot to perform an attack he named B-Gun. But if you're still underwhelmed by that, then let's move on to the fourth technique, Rankyaku. As opposed to the Shigun, this is more of a long range attack whereby the user kicks at a speed high enough to send a blade of compressed air flying towards who or whatever has been deemed unfortunate enough to become their target. It's actually very similar to the compressed air slashes that almost all proficient swordsmen in the One Piece world seem to be capable of. And with that in mind, it of course does not necessarily need to be fired from one's leg. And Rob Lucci has even shown the proficiency to generate a Rankyaku from his tail in leopard form. But now that we've delved into both agility and power, I think it's fairly important that we examine defense. You know, for the rare cases in which a Rokushiki user would encounter power or speed capable of combating or even surpassing their own. And as a potential solution, I present you with the fifth Rokushiki technique, Tekai. Literally meaning iron body, this ability focuses on hardening one's muscles to the point where they replicate iron, and thus not only nullify damage from incoming attacks, but also ideally cause harm to the individual attempting to attack them. However, a big caveat for invoking the use of Tekai is that the user's body becomes entirely frozen, so it can be a bit of a risky technique. Essentially, you'd better be damn sure that your Tekai will not be broken. With that said, it is possible to utilize Tekai whilst moving, sort of. For example, Bluno has a technique called Tekai Rin, whereby he creates an attacking momentum towards his opponent and then activates Tekai 
Sakai. Although it has also been demonstrated by Jabra that it is possible to train yourself to the point where you are able to move whilst using Tekai. And he has even created an entire subgenre of martial arts known as Tekai Kenpo focused on this very idea. And finally, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you simply need to dodge, we have Kami Yi, which makes the user's body extraordinarily flexible as if it were a mere sheet of paper. And there's not a lot more to the base form of Kami Yi than that. However, it does present some potential for adaptation as shown by Rob Lucci, who incorporated into the mysterious Seimeki Khan ability, allowing him to make his leopard hybrid form much smaller, lighter, and faster. And that's all six of the Rokushiki techniques, or is it? Well, despite the fact that we have covered six abilities, like all good martial arts, there does exist a secret seventh technique only available to those who possess a full mastery of the first six. And it is known as the Rokogan. Touted as the ultimate attack of the Rokushiki, this allows the user to fire an absurdly powerful shockwave. However, it is not an easily utilized technique and appears to take a great physical toll on its user. But yeah, that's all seven out of six techniques of the Rokushiki. I should say that there are a huge variety of fusions that do exist by combining one one, two, three, or however many of the Rokushiki abilities a user sees fit to craft a personalized attack. Some of which I've already examined above, but it really is put to the creativity and mastery of the user to push this martial art to its fullest potential. Some more fun facts about the Rokushiki. The Tekai technique bears a lot of similarities to the idea of Armamentaki, actually. Although the key difference between the two is that Tekai is based entirely on its user's physical strength, whilst Armamentaki is a reflection of the user's willpower. According to Oda, there exists a further secret eighth Rokushiki technique, a joke move called Chokai, which literally means to bother, and it essentially allows its user to relentlessly annoy their target. Outside of the established Cypherpole agents, there is currently only one canon character in the series who possesses a mastery over the entire set of Rokushiki techniques, and that person is rather surprisingly, Kobe, who was said to have mastered them in volume 1000. And finally, a truly useless fact, the non-canon character Zephyr from One Piece Film Z had allegedly mastered the Rokushiki style, despite the fact that he never once displayed a single technique in his various combative scenes. But that pretty much does it for the Rokushiki. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101. And as a result of engaging in the Rokushiki, you can from time to time be transformed into a black lightning bolt. And judging from his facial expression, I, uh, I don't think that anybody quite warned Rob Lucci about this.